Amen, church. And I'm super excited because tonight we have a special guest speaker. It is Reverend Anthony DiGregorio, and he is the lead pastor of Crossroads Worship Center. And he is the husband to the most beautiful woman in the world, both inside and out, Amanda DiGregorio. He was formerly on the pastoral staff of Faith Fellowship Ministries under Pastor Dave DeMola and Diane DeMola. And he was also the prior academic dean and intake director at Teen Challenge New York. Church, help me give Pastor Anthony a huge <laughs> New Beginnings welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Well, let's give Jesus a 10 times louder clap than that. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen, amen. How's everyone doing tonight? Well, I'm super excited to be here. New Beginnings is, uh, it used to be my home here. And uh, I spent some years here. Many of you know, many of you probably don't know, early in my journey this was my church. This uh, Pastor Joe is my pastor. I still consider Pastor uh, a father in the faith of mine, someone who I, I text him questions all the time, like, what would you do if this happened? So I just want to honor this house, and I want to honor your pastor. Give your pastor a round of applause. I'm so thankful for all the leadership here that poured into my life early in my spiritual journey. Uh, before I begin, I just want to honor my wife, too. This is my wife, Amanda, who I'm very thankful for. And my goodness, she, God knew what he was doing. And she's the most amazing woman in the world. And I love her so much. When I started here at New Beginnings, like I never really plugged into a church before. Um, I got saved at a church, Faith Fellowship. I rededicated my heart to Jesus, and, but the Lord led me here. And it was in this house that I was telling pastor in the back, it was in this house where I really, um, it was because of his, this is a word church, a Bible teaching church. Um, you hear the word of God, uh, the uncompromised word of God. And I remember it was here where I got so fired up for the word and never left, by the way. I'm still, I'm more fired up than ever for the word of God. But it was in this house where God developed a hunger and a desire for the Bible. I love the Bible. I love the word of God. And, and so I just honor this house for that. And the first step that I took in ministry was in this house, the first thing I ever did, I, I talk about it in our church all the time, was ushering. That was my first step uh, that God led me. And how many of you know that we're on a spiritual journey and we're constantly taking next steps, amen? amen. And uh, I remember I signed up to, I, I sat in Pastor Cap's office uh, and he, there he is in the back. How you doing, Pastor Cap? And um, I'm like, yeah, let me, I'll usher, you know. And I remember they gave me one of those walkie-talkies and those headpiece. And I thought I was so cool. Like, I was like a Secret Service ushering agent in this house. Like, like they gave me that thing. I was like, breaker, breaker, breaker. There's two coming in on the left, you know. Like, you know, and I remember there was Joe saying, like, you're intense. I'm like, yeah. Like, you know, and I would watch two come in. I would run at them. Come on, I got two free over here, two seats over here. I, I was so excited. I couldn't believe they gave me that earpiece, you know? And uh, I found every excuse in the world to use that thing. Like, there was no reason for me to even talk on it. And I'd be like, hey, uh, do you need me to do anything? Just, to talk, just so I can talk on it, you know? But I thought I was so cool. But, but ushering was my first step into ministry, really. And uh, I want to encourage you, if you're not serving the house of God, just start somewhere, whether it's greeting, ushering, whatever it is, God will meet you in your next step. And, and, uh, and the rest is history. I don't know how I got here to be a pastor. I mean, I always tell God, I'm like, God, you could have found so many more gifted and talented people, but he chose me for some reason to pastor a church. We're so excited what God is doing. We started a church three and a half years ago. Um, in the Matawan Aberdeen area, and God is moving, and God is touching people. We're reaching the area with the gospel. 
Uh, we're growing, and it's just so exciting. So, it's so I'm so excited to be here. Uh, are you guys ready for the Word of God today? Yes. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you to take notes. Um, I gave the team a lot of material, and I thank them because it was a lot. Um, I'm actually, what I'm giving you today revolutionized my prayer life. And um, this, we just kind of came out of a series called, I want to encourage you to take notes or take pictures of the, where is this? Oh yeah, up over here, the screen. So take pictures of the, because you're not going to be able to write down fast enough. So I encourage you to take pictures. And my prayer is that you're, all of you are at different stages in your prayer life. And um, some of you have a decent prayer life, a good prayer life. Some of you may have an amazing prayer life. My, my prayer today is that your prayer life would go to another level wherever it's at. And we just, we just came out of a series called Build Your Life. And I had this thought, I know it was from God, um, that I, I feel like we're all in this rebuilding stage of ministry and our personal walk. And I just, I, it all comes down to really, if you wanted to, if I wanted to build the people's lives in our church, if you wanted to build your life, it comes down to really the big three. It's the big three. And it's, it's worship, the word, and prayer. So we designed a series around that. It was supposed to be three weeks. It turned into like seven weeks because we just felt God so strong in the series. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about prayer. And what's interesting is that the big three that I'm talking about, that I, that I did a whole series around, it, what's interesting is that there's three named angels in the Bible. Uh, many of you know that. The first one I'm naming today was Lucifer. He was the worshiping angel. And what's interesting about him is he had, he had uh, instruments built in his body that, that he, was, he was actually created to lead worship in heaven. And most of you know that he's an unemployed cherub. He's been booted out of heaven because he wanted to worship. And what's interesting is that God, there, so there's this staff position in heaven open uh, that, that, you know, was available, but God never, he never created another angel to worship or employed another angel to worship. He's like, I'm going to make me some humans. And, and it's, he's going to take better pleasure in that because I, they're not going to be made to worship me. They're going to choose to worship me. Amen. So, and I think God takes great pleasure in when we choose to worship him, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter what the devil or circumstance is coming at our life, that we choose to worship God no matter what. Amen. Amen. John chapter 4 actually says that the father, see, he's like seeking to, of those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So if you want to find God, just worship God and he'll find you. Amen. Amen. So, so we did a message on that. And, and the next angel is, represents the word. And his, uh, Gabriel, he represents the word or he's the, the messenger angel. Every time you see him in scripture, he would deliver the word to somebody. Amen. And, and this is, if you want to build your life, I don't think there's anything more important than getting, eating the word, chewing on the word, reading the word, hearing the word. And you know that if you're coming to New Beginnings on a Wednesday night, and if this is your church and Pastor Joe is your pastor, you know the word of God is important and, and you're in love with the word. So to have that every day to meditate on the God's word, it's so important. And, um, and the next angel is Michael. Michael is, anytime you see him in scripture, he's the warfare or the, the praying angel. So my, one time you see him in scripture is Daniel chapter 10. Daniel starts a 21 day uh, praying and fasting and seeking God. And, and uh, after nothing for 21 days, he gets no answers, nothing. And on the 21st day, an angel appears to him and he's like, he's like, I, was, I heard you from heaven on the first day. He goes, but there was a prince of Persia that held up the answer. So I'm using the New Jersey translation. He's like, I had to call on the big guns, Michael the archangel, to come. He's basically telling you, talking about a principality that was in Persia, which is modern day Iran. There's some principalities over there still right now, amen? But God is still moving and saving some Muslims over there. But he had to come through and break through with the answer. But what's interesting, God heard them, heaven heard them on the first day. 
Amen. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And what's interesting about that in Daniel chapter chapter 10 is we learn that there's a war going on in a realm that we need to be aware of. That there's a spiritual realm that I'm concerned too many Christians are not aware of. So prayer is a powerful discipline or a powerful thing in your life that you need to grow in. And most people believe that prayer is just connecting with God, which it is connecting with God. That's part of it. And it's interceding for people. But there's another part of prayer that I'm concerned too many Christians don't partake in, and that's warfare. I said that's warfare. Amen? Come on. So if you give me amens, I preach better and faster. Amen? (laughs) So, but, but... but we need, you got to understand that we are in a war and, and we're, we need to use the weapons of our warfare. Amen? Amen. So what I'm giving you today, I'm actually preaching my prayer life and, and it's revolutionized my prayer life. And it's been a powerful, powerful, and I'm going to use the Old Testament tabernacle. And so I want to, so even the disciples they asked Jesus. They were walking with Jesus. They were talking with Jesus. And they would have learned, they would have known how to pray. They, would, they were Hebrew boys. They would have been given dozens of prayers to memorize. But they were walking with Jesus and they're like, all right, I want to pray like that. Like they, they would have seen Jesus kind of walk away and, and start connecting with the Father and praying. He wasn't like, oh, dear Lord, bless me. Like he wasn't praying. He would have been loud and boisterous and the presence, the manifest presence of God. They would have seen something that they've never seen before. So they asked Jesus, like, show me how to pray, even though they would have been people that knew how to pray. So, and, and Jesus showed a pattern or a model, and that's kind of what I'm doing today is to show you a pattern of, and that's the word for the day. Remember that word, that I'm going to show you a pattern to intimacy with God. Now, now let me say it this on the front end. Now that we are in this new covenant of grace, we're in a new testament, we're new covenant believers, we don't have barriers or religious hoops that we got to jump through to get in the presence of God. The blood of Jesus was shed at Calvary. The Bible says when he died on the cross, the veil was torn in two, signifying there is no longer separation between you and you and God that you can enter, that you can approach and enter the throne room of grace boldly in a time of need. Amen. But notice you need to approach. So, so, and then, and then Ephesians says that the blood of Jesus has brought us near. So, so what I want to say on the front end is that I'm not talking about religious hoops that you got to jump through to get into the presence of God. We can come boldly to the threat presence of God because of the blood of Jesus, because we have been washed and cleansed and purified and made as white as snow, we can approach God. Can can we say amen to that? Amen. However, there are steps that we can take to intimacy. Let me say it this way. So if I want to have an intimate night with my wife, and I'm going to, I don't want to get inappropriate. I'm just saying PG, amen. And that's why we have children's church. But, but if I wanted to have, if I wanted to have an intimate night with my wife, I might say to my wife, like, wow, you look really beautiful. I said it tonight. I just want to say, wow, you look really beautiful tonight. And then I might say, hey, you want, let's go out and get a nice dinner. We deserve it. Let's go get a nice dinner. Let's go and watch a movie after, eat some popcorn together. Then, then we might hold hands on the way to the parking lot. Then we might go to our house and, and get on the couch and just cuddle up. And, and, then, and then we're going to stop it right there. Amen? So what, what I'm, what I'm going to say is that there's, there's steps that I take to get into an intimate night with my wife. Like, I'm not going to jump to the end thing. There's some steps that I'm going to take. Do you, under, you follow me? Yes. Well, the same thing with God that we can take. Like, I'm going to go here. 
I'm going to go there. And that's what I'm talking about today. So, so, so are you ready? Are you ready? I'm about to dig in. I'm about to give you a bunch of too much information. Take some pictures, take some notes. But on the front end, before I really dig in, I want to say this is that prayer, if you're taking notes, prayer is not getting God to align with us. It's more about getting us to align with him. And I think like some people approach God and they're like, you know what, brother, like I I need to inform you about what's going on here. And you need to know about like you don't know, like this is what needs to be done. Like, brother, if you don't like we're informing God. No, like it's more about a movement to align ourselves. Let me say this way. Prayer is a movement toward God and his agenda, allowing him to mold us and shape us to allow his will to be done in our life. So we, we want our will and our heart and our mind to line up with his heart, his will, and his mind and his word, right? So that's what prayer really is on the front end, amen? So we're taking steps to intimacy. So I'm talking about today the Old Testament tabernacle that God instructed Moses to build a portable church. And I... <laughs> I, I laugh at this because Crossroads Worship Center, we, our church is in a middle school auditorium, and it's a, we're grateful for the space. We have 500 seats to fill. We have a library for children's church. We have a gym for children's church. We have place for small. We, so we're thankful for our space, but my goodness, it's a lot of work. We have to set it up and break it down, set it up and break it down, set it up and break it down. We've been doing it for three and a half years. Moses and the people of God wandered in the wilderness. They did it for 40 years. I promised our church, I'm not going to make you do that. Amen. <laughs> so, so they had a portable church, which they, they called it the tabernacle. So here's Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9. It says, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. Amen. Now, that's the ultimate goal, I think, of prayer is that, we, that I would leave my time of prayer that I knew, I know I was with God. I was just explaining to my wife on the way here. Yesterday, I had a prayer time with God every day, but yesterday, God was in my room. Like, God, he came, he, I'm telling you, the presence of God, and I was actually praying like this, this pattern, and the Holy Spirit came in my room, and that's what I want for you. That's what I want for our church. That's what I want, that, that you would leave, that you would know that you were with God. That's the goal of prayer, amen? So then it goes on to say, you must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern that I show you. So God told Moses to build this tabernacle according to the pattern that's in heaven. So this is an, oh, pastor, this is an Old Testament thing. No, this is a heaven thing. It's in heaven. So we know that because in Hebrews 8, uh, verse 5, it says, they serve, and he's talking about the, what they built, they serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what's in heaven. So this is why Moses was warned when he was about to build a tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the, remember the word, pattern that I show you on the mountain. So the pattern of the Old Testament so this is what's interesting. It's so amazing that God, they built this tabernacle exactly according to the pattern of heaven. But in this new covenant and new test, it has new covenant and new testament realities that are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's so powerful. And I, I'm, I'm going to, if I start yelling, I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just really excited about this. Amen. <laughs> So, so this is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, he says, don't think that I came to abolish the Old Testament or the law and the prophets. I didn't came to abolish it or get rid of it. I came to fulfill it. I, I did not come to destroy. I came to fulfill it. So, so, so we can observe things that they did. So here's a picture of the tabernacle. And I want to just give a round of applause for whoever did this, that put this. I, they did, had a lot of notes and a lot of pictures. And I just, I'm just grateful and thankful. It was a lot. I was actually going to bring a pamphlet. I just didn't have time. It was just because it's just a busy time but, um, to, for, for you guys to take home. But this is, the, this is what the tabernacle would look like. You can notice that there's 
The, there's the front of it. Those are the outer gates, right? Those, those are the outer gates, which you would enter into the outer courts. And then there's pieces of furniture, right? So the whole thing is a tent without a top. And then you see the part that has a top. That's the holy place. And even the holy place is divided by a veil. There's more, uh, you first walk in and there's some furniture in there. And then, and then it's divided the holy place by a veil. And behind that is the holy of holies of only where only the the high priest was allowed to go so that's the so that is what now i now that's what heaven is supposed to look like i i'm pretty sure it's going to look a lot nicer than that in heaven amen but that was built so so it goes on to, so the thought is that we go through some steps and i'm and i'm going to outline them according to this tabernacle to enter in to enter in God's presence, to enter in, uh, I'm calling it steps of intimacy, a pattern, amen? Uh, Exodus 33, 11, it says, inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. How many of you want that for your life, that you want to <laughs> enter into the presence of God and have him speak to you? So, so there's seven steps and six pieces of furniture, and God, let me get through it all. Let me get through it all in Jesus' name. So notice the first, it's not a furniture, but it's a first step. The first thing they would do is they would enter the gates to the outer court. They would enter, the, so my first point is they enter the gates to the outer court. This is the part in your prayer time where you would give God thanks and you would give God praise, right? So why? Psalms 100 it describes it perfectly. Verse 4, it says, You enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So the point of the matter is that we're not approaching God in a hurry. That we don't want our prayer life to be a 911 prayer life. So now God is okay if you're in a 911 situation and you need to pray a 911 kind of prayer, but that should not be the norm for your prayer life. Amen. That should not be the norm. So before I get into gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy, like we should enter the courts, enter into the presence of God with prayer. I was thinking of the song, enter the gates reckless with praise. I don't know. You guys know that song? Uh, you'll figure it out. But, but, but you enter his gates with praise. So, so Jesus modeled this when he would say, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So he was basically modeling for them that, that this is the first thing we do. Just before we ask him for anything, let's praise God. Let's thank God. Let's worship God. Let, before I get into anything, I'm going to thank God for what he's already done. And I'm going to praise God for who he is. God, thank you. I'm so thankful for what you've done in my life. Amen. Amen. So uh, Psalms 103, one of my favorite Psalms says, praise the Lord, my soul, my inmost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord, my soul. And notice it says, forget not his benefits. So forget not his benefits. He goes on to list six benefits. And he says, he says, who forgives my sin, who he, and I'm making it personal. He, he heals my diseases he redeems my life from a pit. How many of you have been redeemed from the pit and now you're in the power? I know I was in a pit and he redeemed me and he put me in and he crowned me, right? And he, he redeemed my life from the pit and he crowned me with love. Like I used to be a jerk and now he gave me love. Like love is on in me because God lives in me, amen? He's crowned you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things and he renews your youth like the eagles. So before I ask for God for anything, I just said, God, thank you that you forgave my sin. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you that you are my healer. Thank you for redeeming me for the, from the pit. Thank you for crowning me with love. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for restoring me. So God, I'm so thankful for what you've already done in my life. Amen? Amen. So now the next piece of furniture is the brazen altar. 
It's the brazen altar. They would have to pass through, the priests would have to pass through the brazen altar altar. This is the first piece of furniture. Now, this is the place where the, the animal would be sacrificed. They would cut up a, a lamb or a goat, and, and there would be blood everywhere. And thank God we don't have to do that anymore because there would be, it would be a mess in this place. Amen? Amen. But, but uh, so this is the place where the priest, and now I just had this thought as I was preparing, like the priest would walk through this brazen altar, and there would be a dead animal there. And just think about that. That animal would be alive if it wasn't for what I've done in my life. So you take this time, by the way, the brazen altar represents the cross of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That it wasn't a, a, a goat, it wasn't a, a ram, it wasn't a bloody animal. His name was Jesus who hung on that cross for you, who took on the sins of humanity, that he is the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world one time forever so we don't have to chop up animals anymore. Can we just take a moment and thank God for the cross of Jesus? Yeah. So, so this is a time in my prayer where I focus on the cross. Yes. And, I, and I actually take, receive communion. I did it today, did it yesterday. I, and you don't have to come to church and receive communion. I mean, doing it in church is awesome to do cor corporately. But you can do that privately in your private time and receive communion and say, God, I'm thankful for the body of Jesus that was broken for me. I am thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for me. Amen? Amen. And I actually like to remind Satan of the blood, that, that this is a time where I said, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is over this house. I apply the blood to my home. I apply the blood to my marriage. The blood, of, he's freaked out by the blood. Amen. I apply the blood to my church. I apply the blood to my pastor. The blood of, when he tries to bring condemnation against you, remind Satan that the blood is against you. The blood washed me and cleansed me. There is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful for the blood, the blood, the blood. Amen. Amen. The blood. And Isaiah saw the cross 400 years before it happened. And a familiar scripture, Isaiah 53, he says, but he was pierced. That's the, the hands, the nails pierced hand. He was pierced for my transgressions. He was pierced for my trans. He was crushed for my iniquities. So the hands represent what I've done, that I've transgressed and I've sinned, right? And the iniquities is the inward evilness, uh, 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 sin on the inward, right? Iniquities, right? And then it says the punishment that brought peace was on him. That would have been the, the crown of thorns on his head. And then it says by his stripes, so that would be the cat nine tails that he took before the cross, by his stripes, we are healed. So thank you, God, for your nail-pierced hands that I have freedom from my past. Thank you, Lord, that you, he didn't just forgive you. Thank you, Lord, that you changed me. Like, so I'm thankful. So uh, thank you for the spear, the spear that would have went into his heart. That the spear that went in his side, it would have went into his heart, which represents freedom in my heart. That, that I can be free of past hurts. That, I'm, that God, thank you that you've created in me a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. You know, and the, the crown, which is that he took a crown of thorns on his head so that you can be free in your head. So that you don't have to live in anxiety anymore. That you can be free from the spirit of fear because he took something on his head so that we can be free in our head. Amen. Amen. And then he took stripes and wounds and, and you're praying like this and you're just thanking God. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes, I am healed. You provided healing for me so that sickness and disease no longer has dominion over my body. The Bible says that I am healed. I was healed, First Peter says. So you can declare that over your life that Jesus paid the price for forgiveness of sin and healing in my body and freedom in my mind that I don't have to be that sin no no longer has dominion over me because I've been washed and cleansed with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the cross. Amen? Amen. And the next piece of furniture is the labor, is the labor. So this would be, that's the labor. So they, before they would enter the holy place, they would be washing their hands and they wash their feet before they would enter into the holy place. Now, most theologians say this represents baptism. This represents baptism. Uh, for me, 
This is a time of reflection because in the laver, inside the laver, is this okay? Are you guys all right? Yeah. So, so inside, inside the laver are mirrors. There's mirrors so that they would be washing their hands and seeing a reflection of themselves. So this would be a time where I would reflect, God, show me what I'm not seeing. Show me, God, what, where the, the sins I'm committing. Show me where I need to change. Show me what I don't see. And I'm telling you, pray like this. God will change you. He will transform you. And he'll show you some stuff that you need to. Sh- How many of you know that we're all under construction? He who has begun this work is faithful to complete until the day of Jesus Christ. We're all under construction. It never stops. Amen. Amen. But show me, Lord. And then also, this is a part of my prayer time, is where I would offer my body as a living, everything that I am, I offer it to you, God. I offer my body as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and, ex- and pleasing to God, that this is true worship, right? So this, or some translations say that this is your true uh, uh, service to God, right? So this is a time where I'm offering God, I've given you my life. I still give you my life. Today, I offer my head. I offer my mind to you, God. I thank you, God, that my mind is filled with the truth of who you say I am. I th- I come against every lie that tries to echo in my mind, and I thank you that you filled me with the truth of God's word, and I'm not going to reject everything. I take every thought captive and make it obedient to what Jesus Christ says in his word. Amen? Amen. And I offer my eyes to you today, God. That I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at another woman lustfully, like Job said. I'm gonna make a covenant today. I'm not gonna look. These eyes are gonna are pure. Thank you, Lord. I offer my eyes to you. I offer my ears to you. Thank you, God, that you've given me ears to hear today. God, make me sensitive to to hear your voice. I am your sheep, and you are my shepherd. And the voice of the stranger, I will not follow. God, make me sensitive to hear your voice today. Thank you that my hands, what I represent present what I do. Thank you, God, that what I do is blessed. Whatever you said that if I meditate on the word, what my hands shall t- touch will be blessed today. I thank you that this, my feet I offer to you. Your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I thank you, God, to order my steps here today. In Jesus' name, I offer everything to you. And this is intimacy with God. And let me tell you that the more intimate you are with God, the more fruitful your life would be without being without waking up in the morning trying to be fruitful. I'll try this section over here. I don't think they got it over there. Like when you're intimate with Jesus Christ, your life, your life, it, it, it bears fruit because you're abiding in the vine. John 15, that if you abide in the vine, your life will bear much fruit and it will bring glory to the Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now you're stepping into the tent with the roof. And this is the, the candlestick. This is, you saw this. This is the lampstand candlestick. You would have seen this. A lot of Jewish people have it in their window. I never knew, like, growing up what that meant. You know what it means? This is the seven-pronged candlestick, and it would, be, would have been fed with perpetual oil to keep it burning. Now, the oil in Scripture always represents the Holy Spirit. So this is the time in my, this is one of my favorite times in my prayer time, is that I welcome the work. So this represents the work of the Holy Spirit and fire of God in my life. So this is where I welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I declare my dependency on the Holy Spirit. Because I know what I'm capable of doing. I really do. I know what I'm capable of, but I'm, it's not good enough. It's really not. I can't, I can't be on my own actions, my own strength, and my own accord, be a good husband, a good pastor. To pre- I need him for everything. So I, this is the part of my life where, God, I need your Holy Spirit. I declare my dependency on you, Holy Spirit, because it is, uh, Zechariah says in 4.6, it said, it's not by power, it's not, or nor, it's not by might, 
which is my might, nor by power, which is my power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. So I declare, I need you, Holy Spirit. And Jesus talked about this, the, 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 the seven-pronged candlestick, the lampstand in Revelation chapter 2. If you remember, he was talking to the seven churches and he was, one of, he was given from, hey, you're doing this right, but you're not doing this right. And one of the churches, he said, you know, he told them a bunch of things they were doing right, but he, there was one thing. He, they said, you forgot your first love. And he said, if you don't repent, I will remove my lampstand from you. Now, a lot of people have asked me that. What does that actually mean? And I don't know exactly what that means, but I don't want to find out. I don't, I really don't because if the lampstand represents the fire of God, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and, and I, so I never want to lose the fire of God in my life. I need the Holy Spirit. I mean, we can't have church. I mean, God forbid we have church without the spirit of God. Does that mean he can take the spirit of God from me? I don't want to find out. So I, so what does that mean? I'm staying in love with my God and I'm staying on fire for my God and declaring my dependence on the Holy Spirit of God. Can I say it? Can you say amen with me? Oh my goodness. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the, in this day that we're living in, we need the Holy Spirit. I always pray out of Isaiah chapter 11. I always pray this, that the spirit of the Lord, God, I pray that the spirit of the Lord would, would rest upon me, that the spirit, God, I need the spirit of wisdom and of understanding. I need the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might and, and, that, and, and the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. I need this and I'll go through each one and I'm like, God, I need wisdom. I really need your wisdom to lead this church. I need your wisdom to be a good father, to be a good husband. Uh, well, I'm a father to a golden retriever so right now, but we're believing God for, for, for children, amen? amen. But, but, but I, you pray that this is praying God's word and, and you're praying the word of God over your life. And, and, the, and Jeremiah said that if you, that he watches over his word to perform it. So we're not like these name it and claim it weird people that, oh, I go in my garage and I oh, let a Mercedes appear in Jesus' name. Like, that's weird. No, 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 no. No, we claim what God names in the scriptures for our lives. Amen? Yeah. That there's scriptures that he, and when you speak it and declare it in faith, he's got to do it. Amen? Because he watches over his word to perform it. It says that his word never returns void but always accomplishes what it's sent out to do. So if we're praying and, and declaring God's word, there's nothing more powerful in your life. Amen? Amen. Now, the, now, and by the way, this is the time in my prayer life, in my prayer time, is where I'll set some time to pray in the spirit. Like you need to, if you don't have your private prayer language, it's a powerful thing. You need it. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with, with the evidence of tongues, pri I'm telling you, the Bible says prophecy is powerful because it edifies the church. But when you pray in the Spirit, it edifies you. So spend time every day praying in the Spirit. And it's like a perfect prayer of the will of God over your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, to pursue love and desire the gifts of the Spirit, but especially that you would prophesy. So I'll spend this time and I'll be like, Lord, I need, God, I, I need the gift of tongues. I need the, God, give me a prophetic word today for somebody. God, I want the word of knowledge and well, word of wisdom and the gift of faith and the working of healings and miracles. And I'll ask God, it says earnestly desire, another translation, the gifts of the Spirit. So I'll spend this time as I'm reflecting and declaring my dependence on the Holy Spirit. I ask God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not to bring me glory so I can get puffed up. So it's always to bring him glory. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit are not for a show. It's for a function in the body of Christ. Amen. And we need that. Amen. So I'll, and then I'll, I'll go over the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit. Let God work love and joy and peace and patience. And I'll hang out at patience for a while. <laughs> Give me patience, Lord. Amen? Amen. Give me patience. But moving on. So the next part of the furniture is a big one. 
It's the semolina bread. That's the way I, I like it. This is, but it's the show bread. It's the, it's the table. This represents the word of God. It's the table show bread. So this is the time where I have my scriptures that, that I declare in certain seasons of my life or certain things I'm going through. Y'all have them. You should have scriptures printed out and take this time to declare God's word, whatever situation you're going, declare it over your marriage, declare it over your church, pray for your pastor, pray for your church. I mean, th this is where God's word has power. Amen. Amen. It's what Bible says that it, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. So before I start praying, by the way, I spend time studying God's word. And I, and I preach the whole message around how to study the word. And, but you, I know you guys know that, most of you. But you got to have the Bible in your life. So before I would get into my prayer time is what I would meditate on God's word. Amen? Amen. The next piece of furniture is the altar of incense. So this represents worship. This represents worship. So it's the word. It's prayer. This is, the, this is where that the priest would worship God. Now, this is the time. So, so this is, I just want to share this scripture. So I worship his name. I, I, the altar of incense, I love worshiping the names of God. Amen. Like he's got a lot of names. <laughs> and I worship his name. There's a, a power that happens when you release that name. There's, there's a power. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 10, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and are safe. Amen. Come on. So the righteous run. So, so this is a time where I'll proclaim and declare the names of God. And I have them here today. If you want to take a picture, Yahweh, thank you that you are Yahweh, the Lord. And I always like making it personal. You are my Lord. You are Adonai, the Lord God. You are Elohim, Father God, Creator God. You are Jeho uh, Abba, you, which is Father, which is really, the, it's the most endearing way to say Father in Aramaic. It, it really means Daddy God. You are my Father. You are my daddy. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. You are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, which represents my victory. You are El Roi, the God who sees me. The Bible says that his eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open to our, our cries. So thank you, Lord, that you see me. You are El Shaddai, the God Almighty. You are the Rose of Sharon. I'm sorry, El Lion. You are El, the Rose of Sharon. You are the roadway of righteousness. You, the revelation says that you are faithful and true, that you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your name, the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. That name has power. The name of Jesus Christ. And this is the part, the part of my time, my private time. I don't really, I was telling my wife on the way here, I don't really kneel for anything or anyone. It hurts, you know, like I don't kneel for anybody. But this is the time in my prayer time, as I kneel before the Lord, I get on my knees. Psalms 95, 6 and 7, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is God. And we are the Lord, I'm sorry, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you, if you will hear his voice, so this is the time because we're worshiping the name of Jesus. This is the altar of intent. We're worshiping God. And I'm telling you, so this is the time I look for, I have a playlist on Spotify and I look for songs with the name of Jesus. Amen. And by the way, I actually instructed our worship team, get rid of all the songs that are about me, me, I, I, me, myself, and I. Get rid of all of them. I want to hear songs with the name of Jesus. His name is Jesus. Worship. Oh, come on, somebody. How beautiful is the name of Jesus Christ. So 
I instructed our team, because some of these songs are, okay, they're good if I'm in the car, but when we're coming together, we need to lift up the name of Jesus. If my name be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So I, this is the time. I was just doing it yesterday. I'm not preaching anything I don't do. Yesterday, the, that song by Phil Wickham, His Name is G. I'm on my knees, and I'm playing that song. Do you guys play that song here? His name, his name is G. Oh, you don't want me singing. It's not my anointing, Amen. I was actually going to ask them to play it. I was like, I'll oh, forget it. But, but I get on my knees and I worship the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, yesterday I had an encounter with God. And it's not just yesterday, it's all the time. Because I believe that if you're here today on a Wednesday night, I don't have to convince you that prayer is important. I don't have to convince you that you need to have a prayer life. You guys are the crazy people for Jesus, right? You're here, you've come on Wednesday night and you want, you love God, right? So I don't need to convince you the importance of this, but I want you to, inca- so some people, I, I know I've talked to so many people, like I want to pray, but I just don't know what to say. Like, and, I, and I'm not connecting. And I'm telling you, yesterday I hit something and, and I, I do this, I, I, I do this pattern Almost, not every day, because it takes some time, i got to be honest. But I do this pattern of praying, and I, I hit something. Like yesterday, gee, I'm telling you, the whole, I would not stand up here and exaggerate. He was in my room. Amen. He was in my office. I was on my knees with Phil Wickham and singing His Name is Jesus. And, and, and the Holy Spirit, and I was just like, oh my goodness, it's like the presence of God was in my room. And there is nothing more beautiful that I've ever encountered in my life than the presence of God. Amen. It's wrecked me. It's totally changed my life. Like, and actually, this is the church where I've encountered the presence of God, the manifest. Now, I know like I, some people say, well, God lives in me and all that. Yes, he lives in you, but there's a difference between the inner presence and the manifest presence. Amen. And I'm telling you, you don't have to wait to come to church on Sunday to experience that manifest presence. You can experience the manifest presence of God by yourself because you don't have to. It's not just for the high priest like in the old covenant. In the new covenant, of grace, we're all a kingdom of priests. We're all a royal priesthood. So we can enter into the manifest presence of God. Come on, somebody. Isn't that amazing? Can I get a good amen? Is is there anything more beautiful than the presence of God? My wife called me yesterday and I was having a day. Can you relate? I was having a day. She's like, oh, you're having a day. I can just tell. I was getting hit from the left, from the right. This is going on, that's going on. And I learned this really cool feature on the iPhone. Oh, I'm doing really good with time. Great, 752. So I, I learned this really cool feature, do not disturb on my iPhone. And I, and I and Joe, you guys know that? So if you have an Android, then I will pray for you over there at the end of the service. But, but, um, but you can shut, it's an amazing feature. Amazing feature, because I was trying to, I didn't do it that day. And I was, and I was trying to do, uh, I was going, I was preparing for, I got so much to prepare for, the Christmas messages and New Year's and planning and all this stuff. And this one's calling me, that one's calling me, this problem's happened, this one went in the hospital, this one got COVID, this one got, and I'm just getting bombarded left and right. And my wife called me on her lunch break and, and uh, she's like, you're having a day, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. So I'm, she, so I'm just like, I'm shutting my phone. That's it. It's off. And I, and I said, I got to get back to prayer. Because prayer is, is a time where if you walk away from prayer and you're still carrying some burdens, you didn't, you didn't really pray. The Bible says to cast your cares unto him because he cares for you. It's a time where we can just like beep, 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 get rid of it, and then move on. And I'm telling you, yesterday, the presence of God came in my office, which I started working from home now. And I'm not working in a church office anymore. I'm working from home. And the presence of God came in my room. And that bad day, I didn't have a bad day anymore. The presence of God lifted every burden, every stress, every anxiety came off of me because, oh, how beautiful it is 
to dwell in the presence of God because where his spirit is, there is freedom. Amen. Amen. So there's one more, there's one more piece of furniture. It's the Ark of the Covenant. So this is behind the veil. This is the, uh, if they have that picture, I don't know. So we got the Ark of the Covenant. That's the last piece of furniture which represents the manifest presence of God. Amen. Now, I told you before, that veil has been torn. In the Old Covenant, they had to go, only the high priest had to go through all these ritual things and only the high priest can enter into the presence of God. This is the mercy seat. It would, if they had the picture, oh, there it is, there it is. So, so that's the angels, and in the middle is the mercy seat, and there's the presence of God, like the manifest presence of God. And we're so thankful in the new covenant that the presence of God isn't in some temple, that we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, that he dwells on the inside of us, amen, and that we can enter into his presence. I wrote down this nugget, if you're writing, if you're taking notes, that the old covenant, the priest would die if they had sin in their life. And the new covenant we are the priests, and the only thing that dies is sin. Amen. Come on, somebody. Isn't that great? So what do we do now? So what do we do? Now that we're in the presence of God, now that we're in his presence, and, I, and I'm telling you, yesterday and even today, I, I was in the presence of God. Now that we enter into the presence of God, what do we do? True priest, the scriptures are clear. We're not, we don't just soak there and just stay there. We get into pr the presence of God to intercede for others. Amen. This is the time where you have your list of your family, your wife, your husband, your pastor. Please pray for your pastor. Yes. I don't know if you realize what we go through. It's crazy. It's insane. All of hell, the shards of hell try to come against us. Pray for your pastor, please. Pray for the leadership of the church. Pray for your church. Pray for the health of the church. Pray for your family. This is the time where we get into some intercession and start praying for the, our loved ones. Amen? Amen. 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 Who's believing for revival? Amen. I'm believing for revival in our land. I pray for that. I believe 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I don't believe that that's an Old Testament. Some people believe, oh, that's an Old Testament scripture. No, 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 no. If that is still alive today. If my people will turn, well, it says, if my people who are called by, by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Come on. I said, I will bring revival in their land. He's looking for a people that's going to seek God. We need to be a people that pray and seek God. And because he is a rewarder for, you, for if you think that's an Old Testament scripture, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Come on, somebody. Was that good? Are you good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm done. I'm done. Amen. Was that, did you enjoy that? Did you learn something? I just want to ask you today, if you're, if you're here today, and I know this is a little deeper end of the pool for, for some of us, uh, but if you're here today and you don't, know if you, you don't know God personally, that if you don't have a relationship with him personally, you know, the Bible says, and this is actually my, one of my life scriptures, this scripture kind of changed my whole outlook on what Christianity is really is. It's in John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying to the Father and he describes eternal life. And he says, this is eternal life. Now, when your Bible says something like that, you need to pay attention. It says, this is eternal life that they may know you and Jesus Christ whom you sent. So I want to tell you today that this thing called Christianity 
This is not a religion. This is not a denomination that if you were born into a denomination affiliation, that if you've been born into a family and, and you think you're right with God because you did something as a baby or you did something as a kid, that is not salvation. Salvation is very simple. It's having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's knowing God that when you appear before God one day, He's not going to look at like your church attendance, although that's important. He's not going to look at, oh, I ser-. Some, of, some people are going to appear before him in Matthew 7, I think it's verse 21. It says, many people will appear before me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I drive out devils in your name? In other words, didn't I do a lot of Christian looking things in your name? And he's like, depart from me, you evil workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I wasn't looking for a religion. I was looking for a relationship. So if you're here today and you don't know if you're right with God or you don't know God, because that's what what it is. It's all about knowing him. That if you're here today and you want to enter into this relationship with him, your one prayer, one heartfelt, it's not the prayer, it's really your heart. It's a heartfelt prayer that you can pray here today. So with every head bowed, I want to ask you a very simple question, but profound. Do you know God? Do you know God? Are you right with God? It's not your good works for salvation. It's knowing him personally. So I want to lead you in a very simple prayer. And, and you know, I, I, I want to ask you to be a little bold today. That if you don't know, if you know God, and you want me to pray a prayer with you and lead you in a very simple prayer, just simply raise your hand. You know, the Bible says that if you acknowledge me before my Father, I will acknowledge, if you acknowledge, Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before my Father in heaven, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. I'm sorry. If you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you pretty strong before my Father in heaven. So I want to ask you one more time, when you raise your hand, you're just acknowledging before people, I want to ask you to be bold right now, to raise your hand, that if you want to, you want me to lead you in this very simple prayer, boldly right now, raise your hand. Amen. There's hands up. There's a half a dozen, maybe more hands up all over this place. Everyone repeat after, oh, I can feel God right now. God is knocking on the door of hearts right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the Bible says that if you confess Jesus as your Lord and you believe in your heart that he was risen from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want everybody, even the people that didn't raise your hand, join with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I confess today that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I confess that Jesus is Lord. I receive you as my Lord. And I believe in my heart that he died for me, but he didn't just die. He rose from the dead three days later. So I call upon the name of Jesus. Save me. Redeem me. Holy Spirit, fill me in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. You, you glad you came out tonight? You, you feel bad for the people that stayed home tonight? Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Man, what a powerful message. Thank you, Pastor Anthony. Thank you so much. I would say based on tonight, you've become a man of the word. I'm proud of you. I really am. Grateful, grateful to, to the Lord, to all that he's doing in you, both of you through your church, through your ministry. Um, Years ago, the Lord turned my attention to the very area where they're ministering now. And some of you may have remembered that we were doing some outreach work in the Keyport area uh, a number of years ago uh, because we felt like, man, my heart just felt such compassion for that area. It has been in the past uh, a dark area. It has been in the past an, an oppressed area. 
And uh, even in the natural, it was an area that was hit very hard when Sandy came through. So when we heard that Pastor Anthony and Amanda were going into that area, we were like, good, praise God. Uh, we're glad that any seeds that we may have sown now, uh, they're there to take care of this. And so we're grateful for that. So um, you know what we do here as a church. Every time we have a guest speaker here, we want to honor the guest speaker. But we also want to make an investment in that ministry. Um, you are destined, obviously, to do awesome stuff there. And um, we're grateful because um, you've answered the call. You've persevered through a really tough number of years. Um, and you've learned how to get the breakthrough. We can see it tonight. Okay, that's the path of the breakthrough is what you taught us tonight. And so I'm grateful for that. But listen to me. I want us to make an investment. Uh, I want us to, I want to receive an offering that we will take and, and present to Pastor Anthony and Amanda on um, behalf of New Beginnings to get behind their ministry there. And this weekend, you've got a pretty special weekend going on. If those of you that have family members up in Matawan area or anywhere along the coast there, Union Beach, Keyport, uh, what else is over there? Uh, Hazlitt, Hazlitt Homedale, Home yeah. Um, if you have family members there, coworkers, friends there, co contact them uh, and tell them to get over to their church. Your service is what, 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. What's the name of the school? Matawan Aberdeen Middle School. So it's Matawan Middle School. And give them instructions. Take, go off Facebook and look it up or look up their website. But this particular Sunday, you're doing a really special outreach there. And uh, you're going to be, you've got like 500 people coming? For an outreach, you're going to be handing out bicycles. You're going to be handing out toys, uh, food also. You did food. I know you. I know we we started. Yeah, you you started doing the box of kindness like we've done, still doing it. So that was cool, and um, yeah, we're so glad that you're that you, you know, you're out there planting those seeds. So this is going to be a special weekend for them, and so uh, see it as an investment to God's love being totally just poured out onto that area there. There's so many needs, so many families in need, so many people that still have not recovered from their houses being destroyed and entire neighborhoods being destroyed. And so what the enemy's meant for harm, God's sending the two of you over there. And your team, your team is important too. And uh, to be a light in that dark area. So let's see, if you're making out a check, make it out to New Beginnings. We take all the offering and then make one check out to the ministry. Uh, you can give online. You can go online. There is a tab there for uh, the guest speaker for tonight, and you can give online. You can give any way that you normally give text uh, with our church app, whatever, and uh, we'll make sure that every single penny gets to uh, Crosswords, Crossroads Worship Center. I keep, want, I keep wanting to say Cornerstone. I don't know why. Crossroads Worship Center. Amen? So if you have people in that area, please contact them and tell them this is a good church. You heard the teaching tonight. Good stuff. And uh, we're just so grateful. Thank you. Amen. 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 Father, thank you so much for tonight, Lord God. We just are so grateful for what we've heard. So grateful, Father God, because it's not just words that have come into our ears. But, Father, I believe that we've received an impartation tonight. Father, and many of us, Father God, are going to delve in into our prayer lives in a deeper way. Uh, Lord God, because not so much because we want to get what we want to get, but because we know that it glorifies you. Thank you for Pastor Anthony and Amanda. Thank you for the blessing that they are to the body of Christ and the blessing that they are to the lost in Upper Monmouth County, Father. And, Lord, we just thank you that you'll continue to grow that ministry, continue to add to it, Father. And, Lord, uh, we thank you that you bless them and give them the desires of their heart, Lord God. And so we're grateful for tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, listen, listen up. Most important thing before you leave. Number one, if you said that prayer tonight for the first time, either for the first time uh, to receive Christ or if you prayed that prayer as an act of rededicating your life to the Lord, recommitting your life to the Lord, please don't just walk out the doors. Come up here. There'll be people are standing in front of the platform. We have a book. We want the Bible that we want to give you. We have some other books that we want to give you. We want some information so that we can help you on this great adventure that you just stepped that into in this relationship that you now have found with the, through God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's extremely important. Number two important thing, next Wednesday night, 
there will be no midweek service. For the next two Wednesday nights, there will be no midweek service. Amen? For the next two Wednesday nights, there will be what? No midweek service. So make sure that you get registered for the Christmas services. Uh, don't forget, New Year's Eve. Did we talk about that tonight? We didn't. New Year's Eve, that's Saturday night, 6 o'clock from 6 till about. We'll be here at 6 o'clock to have service. It'll be a communion service. And then there's an after party that will last for a couple of hours, probably till 8.30, 9 o'clock. <coughs> so we'll come and have communion together and just uh, say goodbye to 2022 and... Say hello to 2023 together as a church family. Amen. Amen. There'll be more information this weekend on that. So, um, again, thank you for coming out tonight. I am very, very glad that you were here. And we look forward to seeing the fruit come forth from this teaching that came to us tonight. Amen. 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 If you have the opportunity on the way out, make sure you say hello to Pastor Anthony and Amanda out there in the lobby. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.